Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, we're going to classify the different types of reflexes, and then I'm going to give you the, some examples of the most uh, typically talked about or most famous reflexes. So first, you can see that reflexes can be classified as innate or acquired. So innate means they are genetically determined, you're born with it. Acquired means they have to be learned. So an innate reflex is one you, you're born with, an acquired reflex has to develop over time. Then we have somatic versus visceral reflexes. So somatic means body. Somatic reflex, re reflexes control skeletal muscle. Visceral or your autonomic reflexes control cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, glands, and fat. We'll talk about that more with the autonomic nervous system. Reflexes can be monosynaptic or polysynaptic. So like the name implies, a monosynaptic reflex has one synapse, which means it's a sensory nerve connected directly to a motor nerve. Those are going to be the fastest but least complex reflexes we have. Poly polysynaptic reflexes can have hundreds of synapses and involve interneurons, which are going to allow for a lot more coordination of a response. So they're going to take a little longer, but the response is going to be much larger and more coordinated. And then we have spinal versus cranial reflexes. So spinal reflexes are ones that occur at the level of the spinal cord. Cranial reflexes occur at the brain. So something like, um, you know, response when I touch your eye, you know, is a different type of reflex than if I, if I strike your patellar tendon with a reflex hammer. All right, so those are the eight different classifications of reflexes. Let's look at some examples. So here we see a, a stretch reflex, the patellar, the patellar reflex here. Um, a stretch reflex, its job is to regulate the muscle length. So if you, if you strike that patellar tendon and quickly stretch that muscle, the response, from, the sensory information will be sent to the spinal cord, information will be processed. The response is going to be contraction of the, of the knee extensors there, and then inhibition or relaxation of the antagonist muscles there, the hamstrings, leading for that kick to, to regulate the muscle length. Now, just to, so you know, there's some confusion here. This is not the same as a tendon reflex. Those, are, those regulate muscle force, but those are not a big deal right now. Um, there is a term you see up here, which is reciprocal inhibition that I think is important. So you see that, um, notice that we have interneurons. This is a very complex reflex because it's actually activating the agonist muscles to cause the quadriceps muscles to shorten. At the same time, it's inhibiting contractions of your of your knee flexors there. So that's what's known as reciprocal inhibition. For any movement to be smooth, you need the agonists, the prime movers, to be stimulated while they, the opposing muscles, the antagonists, are inhibited. Same thing, you know, walking and everything else. All right, uh, then we see the re withdrawal reflex. A flexor reflex would be would be an example of withdrawal reflex. So you have a painful stimulus here, and the body's just you know flex using the muscle flexors to withdraw away from it. Um, you'd also see that same level of, of reciprocal inhibition there, because the last thing you'd want if you touch this flame is to rapidly pull your hand away which is good, but that's also rapidly stretching your triceps. So what if you, what if this, what if that stretch reflex then kicked in, your triceps contracted and put your hand back in the fire? You wouldn't want that. So that's why reciprocal inhibition is so important. As, as, as agonist muscles contract, those antagonists are inhibited. So that's, that's an example of a withdrawal reflex, the flexor reflex there. Then the most complex uh, basic reflex that we talk about is called the crossed extensor reflex. So the crossed extensor reflex happens with a flexor reflex. So here you see some Someone stepping on the stimulus there will pretend I'm a dad, so we'll pretend it's a Lego. So they stepped on a Lego, and then the the the, pain, the free nerve ending pain receptors in that foot are going to be triggered. That's going to lead to a flexor or withdrawal reflex. So you're going to pull that foot away from the painful stimulus. But if that's all that happened, you would topple over because your body weight would be redistributed and you'd fall over. So while there's a flexor or withdrawal reflex happening on one side, which this would be this person's right side, you're going to see the crossed extensor reflex is going to be in involved, especially on the other side. So the cross extensor reflex is going to extend the muscles of the left leg to support the body weight that's being that's being travel, traveling to it. So this entire reflex you see here is not the cross extensor reflex. It is the, the flexor or withdrawal reflex happening along with this crossed extensor reflex, which you can see there at the bottom. The withdrawal reflex is leading to flexion and, and withdrawal of that right foot. The crossed extensor reflex is stabilizing the body to support the weight that's coming towards it. So that's a crossed extensor reflex. All right, so those are the eight different classifications of reflex reflexes and then a few examples for you. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.